Well, August is Jamboree Month, right? And I hope you are watching all of those wonderful videos showing how to use jam and jelly made by the collaborators in August Jamboree. Now last year I made a video describing pectin and how it worked and I will leave it here if you are interested. I urge you to check it out. But today we're going to delve into the world of pectin even further. We're going to talk about the different types of pectin, how to store pectin, can you use pectin if it expires, and is it interchangeable between liquid and powder pectin? We are going to explore all those questions in this video. Hey my resilient citizens, here's another canning tip video. I hope you're a subscriber, but if you're not, please click on that subscribe button and that bell icon that will notify you every time I upload a new video. And I appreciate a thumbs up. So there's many types of pectin. Sure gel, it comes in both regular and low sugar powder types. And it has a liquid variety called Serto. And Ball also has a regular and a low sugar powder pectin. And then there's Panoma's Universal Pectin, and it's a bit different. Each box contains one packet of pectin and one packet of calcium powder, which is monocalcium phosphate, and it does not need sugar to gel a jam. And then there are others such as Mrs. Wages and Generic Apple Pectin Powder. Now you might ask, what is better, powder or liquid pectin? Well, it really boils down to your individual choice and what the recipe indicates to use. The main difference between liquid and powdered pectin is that in the liquid pectin, it's already been dissolved, so you won't have any lumps in your final product. And also, liquid pectin only comes in one form. You know, regular, it does not come in a low sugar option. And also, liquid pectin is generally more expensive to buy in the stores. Now, some also say that Panoma's Universal Pectin doesn't give you quite the clarity, you know, the clearness when you are making a jelly. But I don't usually make jellies. I like to have jam with a lot of fruit in it or preserves. So, I don't know if this is true or not. So what's the best way to store your pectin? It's really the best way you store most of your food items that are shelf stable, and that is in a cool, dry place. You could put it in your refrigerator, but it's not needed, and do not place it in the freezer, because that will change the consistency of the pectin. And might affect your quality. So I just went in my canning area and I found way at the back of the shelf this. And you know what the expiration date is? It is February 20th, 2020. So you might say, well, can we still use it? Well, it is best to use it by the best buy date. And it isn't for a food safety reason, it's just the quality might not be there. You might not get the gel consistency you want. Um, you could always try using double the amount in a recipe, but to be honest, I'm probably just gonna throw this box away. Now there is a difference with the Panoma's Universal Pectin. The shelf life of the unused calcium powder and pectin powder is indefinite. Their website says, Quote, Panoma's Universal Pectin is a shelf-stable product. It keeps indefinitely. Store it cool and dry in an airtight container, unquote. Now, you might have a recipe that sounds really good, and you wonder, well, can I substitute powder pectin for liquid pectin? And the short answer is maybe. There is a difference in the quantity you use and how and when you add your pectin between the powder and the liquid. For one pouch of liquid pectin, you can use two tablespoons of powdered pectin. And when you're using the powder, instead of adding it at the end as you do with liquid, you whisk this powder pectin 
into the fruit before you combine it with the sugar. So there is a difference. And as for adapting recipes that you found in your Panoma's universal pectin box, um, you probably will have to add more sugar when using a powdered or a liquid pectin because those pectins are working with sugar to gel, whereas Panoma's universal pectin does not. Well, the bottom line is, yes, you can, but it's easier to use the pectin specified in the recipe. That way, you'll be assured to get the best quality gelling when you're jamming. Now, one last thing I want to mention is people say, I made it exactly the same as before. What happened? It didn't gel as much. It gelled too much. Why? Well, that may not be the fault of your pectin or your process. Instead, underripe or overripe fruit can change the gelling to be under gelling or over gelling. So that can explain the difference. And you know what I always say? If it doesn't gel up to the consistency you want, you usually have a great topping for ice cream or pancake syrup. So it's still good no matter what the gel consistency is. I hope this answers some of your questions about pectin and making the perfect gel or jam. And I hope you're enjoying 2022 August Jamboree. Make sure you're watching all the videos. Now, get jamming!